Hello students, from today I am going to start the video lecture for class 11th. You have got total 10 units in your syllabus and the first unit is physical world and measurement. The word physics is based on a Greek word fuses and according to Greece language it means the nature or natural things. And a basic thing for the physics is matter. What is matter? Matter is something which occupies space and which has some mass. So what is the definition of matter? The definition of matter is the matter is something which occupies space and which contains some mass. This is the definition. And now the physics subject is based uh, is of two types. This is classical physics and modern physics. Classical physics means the general physics and the modern physics is based on fully electronics which is based on electronics means which is based on the charges and if the physics which is based on charges is based on the quantization quantization of charges so and also the Einstein theory so the classical physics was the physics which was before 20th century and in that physics the quantization was not taken into consideration and in the modern physics the quantization of charges is used and it is based on the Einstein theory of relativity. This is the basic difference between classical physics and modern physics. Now, the invention which is based on different laws or principles. The first invention, steam engine. It is based on the laws of thermodynamics you will study this thermodynamics in class 11th now second is nuclear reactor it is based on nuclear fission this you will study in class 12th radio and TV is based on propagation of electromagnetic waves computers is based on digital logic circuits in these circuits gates are used now this is not in your course in class 12th the CBSC has changed the syllabus next is rocket propulsion rocket propulsion is based on Newton's third law of motion this you have studied in class 9th. Next, aeroplane is based on Bernoulli theorem. You will study in class 11th in the fluid dynamics chapter. The shape of aeroplane is based on the Bernoulli theorem. Next, electric generator. Electric generator is based on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction. This you have studied in class 10th. Next, hydroelectric power. This is based on hydro means water, electric you know well what is electric. Electric, you have studied electricity. In class 10th so hydroelectric <coughs> power it means conversion of gravitational potential energy into electrical energy when gravitational potential energy is changed into electrical energy then we get hydroelectric power and
laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation it is basically the radiation now we will discuss about the conservation laws first law is law of conservation of energy according to this law the energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be changed from one form to another form law of linear momentum this you have studied in the lower class in class 9th remember this it is it was represented by small p linear momentum it means momentum before collision is always equal to momentum after collision so this is the law of linear momentum similarly law of angular momentum this you will study in class 11th angular momentum angular momentum is represented by l or g in some books you will find it represented by l and in some you will find in up board books you will find it represented by g or in some cbsc books also now we will represent it as capital l so angular momentum before is always equal to angular momentum after so this is the law of angular momentum and law of conservation of electric charge law of conservation of angular momentum law of conservation of linear momentum these all are conservation laws first was law of conservation of energy second law of conservation of linear momentum third law of conservation of angular momentum and fourth one is law of conservation of electric charge and according to this law the particles have charges of plus minus 1 plus minus 2 it can be positive or negative charge and so on and the basic charge is e is equal to 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 coulomb when the electrostatic electrostatic chapter you will be able to study in class 12th first unit when the electrostatic charge is produced by friction the act is merely one of separating electron from neutral molecules having a positive charge of equal magnitude means when we rub any two bodies together then the charge flows from one body to another body and the same amount if the electrons are transferred from a body to b body then b body receives the electrons but in a body the positive charge the same amount of positive charge is created in a body because a body lost its electrons so a body becomes positively charged and b body becomes negatively charged this is the law of conservation of electric charge now we will discuss about the units and measurement what are units units
is based on certain values means you if we uh, i can take an example if we know that gonda is 120 km from lucknow or we can say that lucknow is 120 km from gonda the distance is represented by 120 km it means 120 is the number or digit and if we combine this number or digit to the unit kilometer is the unit of distance or we can say that length so 120 km together represents the distance of lucknow from gonda so the unit based on unit we have done measurement first of all unit is very important if we don't know the unit then we cannot measure anything now physical quantity what is physical quantity physical quantity those quantities which can be measured and in terms of which the laws of physics are described this is the definition of physical quantities those quantities which can be measured and in terms of which the laws of physics are described are known as physical quantities we can take example of length mass time temperature etc these are the basic things which is very important to know now there are two types of units first one is <clears throat> basic unit and second one is derived unit basic units are length mass time etc but the derived units are the combination of this basic units now according to the international system international system of units in short we call it as si international system of unit means si unit we are talking about and according to this system there are fundamental units what are fundamental units fundamental units are length mass time electric current temperature luminous intensity and amount of substances 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there are 7 fundamental units there are 7 fundamental units these units are length mass time electric current temperature luminous intensity and amount of substance basically they are the quantities seven fundamental quantities are these and now based on these quantity these quantities must have some units so seven fundamental units units will be what is the unit of length unit of length is according to si system it is meter which is represented by a small m unit of mass it is kg kilogram third unit of time it is si system or mk system or cg system the unit of time is second always it is not changed next electric current 
the SI unit of this fundamental quantity is ampere. Next, temperature. For temperature, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Next, luminous intensity. Luminous intensity, the SI unit of luminous intensity is Candela, which is it is represented by CD. And last one, amount of substances, it is represented by mole. You have studied in chemistry, mole. So these are the fundamental units of these are the fundamental units, and these are the quantities of these. With these seven fundamental quantities and units, the SI system has given supplementary. quantities and there are two types of supplementary quantities they are plane angle and solid angle and the units of these supplementary quantities are supplementary units so two supplementary units are the unit of plane angle is radian and the unit of solid angle is steradian. So you have to remember seven fundamental quantities and these two supplementary units. <coughs> now, I explained you about derived units. Let's take some examples of these derived units. Suppose if we take force, force is derived quantity its unit in mks is kg meter per second square this is mks unit and si unit for force is newton so this kg meter and second these are the fundamental units so when these two or more than two fundamental units are combined together then they form the derived units and this force is the derived quantity derived physical quantity so what are the derived units for this derived unit is kg meter per second and fundamental units are fundamental units are those units by using them this derived unit is made so fundamental unit are kg meter and second now the second type of the use of derived units are work or energy we know that work or energy if we talk about work then work is the product of force and displacement and what is for what is force force is the product of mass and acceleration mass and acceleration into displacement the si unit of mass is kg uh, the mks unit is kg and acceleration we know acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time change in velocity per unit time means it is represented by meter per second square and the displacement is represented by meter so kg meter square per second square is the MKS unit of work or energy and this is based on the fundamental units kg meter second and also we know that power power the unit of power is the SI unit of power is what? Similarly, the SI unit of electric charge is Coulomb. The SI unit of electric potential is Volt. The SI unit of electric capacity is Farad. And the SI unit of magnetic flux is Weber. You have to remember all these SI units.
Now, there are some practical units. Now we will discuss about the practical units. Practical units are first one is astronomical units, which is represented by capital A U. Second is light year, which is represented by a small L Y. Third one is parsec. Now these are the units which are used in the astronomical science, and we will discuss about these units. First is AU, astronomical unit. So we must remember that one AU is equal to one point five into ten to power eleven meter. One point five into ten to power eleven meter. I am explaining you in such a way that you can make the notes based on this directly. So during the watching of this video lecture, you should have a notebook to note down all these things. So what is astronomical unit? This is the value of one astronomical unit. This this relation shows the relation between meter and astronomical unit. So we can say that there are 1.5 into 10 to power 11 meter in one astronomical unit. And what is astronomical unit? It is the average distance of center of sun from center of earth. This is the average distance of center of sun from the center of earth. The average distance is represented in the form of the unit, the practical unit, astronomical unit. Now, the second one is light year. Second is light year, which is represented by small ly. One ly is equal to 9.46 into 10 to power 15 meter. So we can define ly as it is the distance traveled by light in vacuum in one year. What does it mean? The distance traveled by light in vacuum. Now the third practical unit is parsec. So one parsec is equal to 3.1 into 10 to power 16 meter. And what is parsec? Parsec is the radius of a circle at center of which an arc of circle 1 AU long subtends 1 second angle it means suppose there is an arc of 1 AU long and the angle subtended at the center of this arc is one second then the radius of this imaginary circle is considered to be one par sec have you understood this the arc length is one au and the angle is one second then the radius of that circle or we can say that the radius of that arc is one parsec and there is a relation between parsec and AU <coughs> one parsec is equal to one AU upon one second From where this relation comes out? This relation comes out from the formula angle is equal to arc upon 
or radius and we know that the arc is 1 au the arc is 1 au so in place of arc we can write 1 au and the radius and the angle is 1 second so in place of angle we will write 1 second upon radius is unknown so radius is equal to cross multiply this cross transfer means 1 second will come in denominator and radius will come in numerator of right hand side so 1 au upon 1 second and this radius is known as 1 parsec so 1 parsec is equal to 1 au upon 1 second now degree minute second you must know all these three things what is degree means if we want to convert one degree into radian radian is the unit of plane angle we all know so 1 degree to be converted to radian what will be the formula you have to remember this 1 degree is equal to pi upon 180 radian you have to remember this next 1 minute 1 minute 1 minute minute is represented by 1 and a dash above 1 this is 1 minute 1 minute if we want to convert into radian then 1 minute is equal to pi upon in denominator multiply 180 with pi 60 so this you have to remember for conversion of 1 minute into radian and the third thing is the conversion of one second double dash is one second one and to the power double dash we can see like this it is if we want one second into radian then we have to remember that one second is equal to pi upon 180 into 60 and again we will multiply it by 60 to convert it into radian So it is very easy to remember that if we want to convert 1 degree into radian then pi should be divided by 180 and if we want to convert 1 minute into radian then this pi upon 180 means 60 should be multiplied to 180 in denominator to convert 1 minute into radian and in the same way if we want to convert one second into radian then again 60 is to be multiplied to the denominator of this one minute convert converted into radian means again we will multiply by 60 then we will get this expression means one second will be equal to pi upon 180 into 60 into 60 radian now these three should be remembered <coughs> and this you have to remember 1 parsec is equal to 1 AU upon 1 second and also 1 parsec is equal to 3.1 into 10 to the power 16 meter this you have to remember 1 LY is equal to 9.46 into 10 to the power 15 meter and 1 AU is equal to 1.5 into 10 to power 11 meter okay now
सोलर डे सोलर डे डेफिनेशन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर टाइम टेकन बाय अर्थ टू कंप्लीट वन रोटेशन अबाउट इट्स एक्सेस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सन टाइम टेकन बाय अर्थ टू कंप्लीट वन रोटेशन अबाउट इट्स एक्सेस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सन is known as solar day similarly sidereal day sidereal day is time taken by earth to complete one rotation about its axis with respect to a fixed star this is the definition of sidereal day these all you have to learn these definitions and what is solar year solar year is time taken by earth to complete one rotation in in case of solar year we should not say rotation one revolution because there is difference between rotation and revolution revolution around sun in its orbit what is the difference between rotation and revolution rotation is about any fixed axis but revolution is about any fixed object for example earth is rotating at its own axis suppose this is the axis and this is earth earth is rotating about its fixed axis and this rotation is completed in 24 hours but this rotating earth revolves around the sun in a fixed elliptical orbit suppose this is earth and with the rotation the earth revolves around this about the earth revolve around sun in fixed orbit elliptical orbit like this so we can say that revolution is different from rotation rotation is about the fixed axis but revolution is about a certain object here the certain object is sun the the earth revolves around sun and this the time period of this is 365 days means one year okay so this is the difference between rotation and revolution now actually it is not 365 days in calendar we are observing 365 days but according to astronomical science this is 366.25 sidereal days means 365 days is in actual condition we can say that one solar year is equal to 366.25 sidereal days you have to remember this one solar year is equal to 366.25 sidereal days and now the next one is solar day sidereal day solar year we have completed now lunar month it is defined as time taken by earth to complete 
वन रिवोल्यूशन लूनर मंथ इज टाइम टेकन बाई मून नॉट अर्थ टाइम टेकन बाई मून टू कंप्लीट वन रिवोल्यूशन अराउंड अर्थ इन इट्स ऑर्बिट सो वन लूनर मंथ is equal to 27.3 days you have to remember this also one lunar month is equal to 27.3 days and the last one is shake shake is the smallest unit of time so one shake is equal to 10 to power minus 8 second you have to remember this one shake is equal to 10 to power minus 8 second now this is the first this was the first part of the lecture on units and measurement now after this in the second part we will discuss about the dimensions the replications and the error analysis we will discuss in the third part of this unit so there will be three parts this is the first part of the lecture the second part will be based on the dimensions of the physical quantities and the third part will be based on the error analysis thank you very much